long time ago, I, uh, I moved from Adelaide to Mosman and chose Mosman for one simple reason. It had um, a lot of the delights you get in, a, in, an, in an area that is uh, out of the mainstream and very much a um, place of quietness, a lovely village atmosphere. And that's an amazing thing with 50, 52 years later, I'm looking at Mosman and it hasn't changed dramatically in its lifestyle. We had a, what you call, a early federation home. And uh, collecting art was sort of uh, pretty much driven by the architecture and the, and, and, and the space to display it. So the idea was what to collect. Well, I came up with this idea that I'd collect paintings of that, of that period of the uh, early 19th century, all by Australian artists and then bought two or three paintings and then realised that two of the three of them were of Mossman and thought, well, well hold on here, this is, this is an interesting thing. Maybe you should collect paintings of Mossman and as time goes by, 20 years later, you would have, uh, you could buy one painting a year or one painting every two years. You'd eventually accumulate an unusual collection to the point where uh, you know, very few people collect within a region specifically, living in that area as well. And then you realise all of a sudden that Mosman has changed a lot from the point of view of the early artists that really did cover it very extensively in the late 18, 1800s and the early 1900s. So you could see the village emerging slowly out of the canvases of the artists. So years later, um, we were to sell that house and build a different home, a contemporary home. Suddenly, we had an art collection that would not sit as comfortably in that where it was uh, uh, more designed for contemporary art and having uh, got to know the uh, Mosman Gallery well I came down and had a chat with the director at the time and we went through this in some detail that maybe this is not just gifting an art collection but it's giving an art collection that has a meaning to the community and has meaning to them when they come and see it. You could really then teach children a lot more about art if you could relate it to the community in which they live. But then the overriding thing was you'd build a pride about the community. This would be just a very special little window into an area that people could own as theirs. That was the idea behind it. The foundation was a, 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 a real product of, of Working for years with people that were mentoring me in my career and I was lucky that I did have some pretty influential people. And of those three people, they were, they were all extremely wealthy uh, and uh, they always had an attitude towards philanthropy. And part of that eye-opener for me was I'd never come from a family that had the money to be philanthropic. We never had money to plan constructively to it. And I watched my friends do it and they had the money. And later on in life, I got lucky. And I got the opportunity to start a company. And that company was sold for a considerably uh, large amount of money. So we took the view and that uh, we would uh, give away the majority of my wealth into a foundation. The beautiful thing is my children are all involved in it and even my grandchildren are involved in the giving. And I think that does a lot to change their lives. Like my life got changed by watching other people in philanthropy. So I often say it's, it's difficult uh, giving money away because you've got to have a sense of responsibility about it. We try and give help, we try and assist, we monitor how, how the money's spent to make sure the money's not just frittered away or wasted. There is one work in this collection that probably was, was hard to part with and that, that's the Streeton, uh, which um, oddly enough is a, a painting that is then the standard street in long format, uh, but it's a picture of two ferries crossing Sydney Harbour, which is a common thing, and it just happens by coincidence. My house is exactly at that point where he painted that painting, because it's exactly 20 minutes after the hour, the two ferries will cross with that view in the background, and that's literally in my backyard. And it was bought before I lived there, before I built that house. But the point is, it's a, 
Just a simple, beautiful straighten with the wonderful blues he has. And you see there's wonderful purple smoke coming from the two ferries. But the, the paintings always intrigued me for that. And so then I had it at my desk in my new home and I thought, well, it is the centerpiece of this collection and it doesn't belong in my home. Uh, it belongs more to the people of Muslim because it's a painting of theirs. Art does not quite receive the same amount of, of acceptance and popular support that it should relative to what it means to the country. Whatever it is that's related to arts, what Australia has brilliantly done in the 19th century and the 20th century is established a culture that's unique. And I see the arts as the soul of this country. And if we do have a soul, it's always been the art uh, that has defined us and set us around the world as to what we are. And if we don't have the ability to be more embracing about the arts and support it particularly more by governments, we will lose our identity and we, we are at risk of being a, a homogenized product So my view is that if there's ever a message that's important to the future of this country is we mustn't lose our identity. That's what defines us and that's what we need to protect and that's what really this little collection is all about. It's defining Australia, but more important, it's defining Muslims.